Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go into chapter 110 of Wonder by RJ Palacio. So let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, I suggest you click off the video now. You have been warned. Chapter 110, Sleep. Then they came out of the narrow valley and at once she saw the reason. There stood Peter and Edmund and the rest of it. Aslan's army fighting desperately against the crowd of horrible creatures whom she had seen last night. Only now in the daylight they looked even stranger and more evil and more deformed. I stopped there. I've been reading for over an hour and sleep still didn't come. It was almost 2 a.m. Everyone else was asleep. I had my flashlight on under the sleeping bag and maybe the light was why I couldn't sleep. But I was too afraid to turn it off. I was afraid of how dark it was outside at the sleeping bag. When we got back to our section in front of the movie screen... No one had even noticed we'd been gone. Mr. Tushman and Mr. Miss Rubin and Summer all, and all the rest of the kids were just watching the movie. They had no clue how something bad had ha almost happened to me and Jack. It's so weird how that can be. How you could have a night that's the worst in your life, but no, to everybody else, it's just an ordinary night. Like on my calendar at home, I would mark this as being one of the most horrific days of my life. This is in the day Daisy died, but for the rest of the world, this was just an ordinary day. Or maybe it was even a good day. Maybe somebody won the lottery today. Amos Miles and Henry bought, brought me and Jack over to where we'd been sitting before with Summer and Maya and Reed. And then they went and sat where they had been sitting before with Zima and Savannah and their group. In a way, everything was exactly as we left it before we went looking for the toilets. The sky was the same. The movie was the same. Everyone's faces were the same. Mine was the same. But something was different. Something had changed. I could see Amos and Miles and Henry telling their group what had just happened. I knew they were talking about it because they kept looking over at me while they were talking. Even though the movie was still playing, people were whispering about it in the dark. News like that spreads fast. It was what everyone was talking about on the bus ride back to the cabins. All the girls, even girls I didn't know very well, were asking me if I was okay. The boys were all talking about getting revenge on the group of 7th grade jerks, trying to figure out what school they were from. I wasn't planning on telling the teachers about any of what had happened, but they found out anyway. Maybe it was from the torn sweatshirt and the bloody elbow, or maybe it's just that teachers hear everything. When we got back to camp, Mr. Tushman took me to the first aid office, and while I was getting my elbow cleaned and bandaged up, by the camp nurse, Mr. Tushman, and the camp director were in the next room talking with Amos and Jack and Henry and Miles, trying to get a description of the troublemakers. When he asked me asked about me about them a little later, I said I couldn't remember their faces at all, which wasn't true. It's their faces I kept seeing every time I closed my eyes to sleep. They looked the look of total horror on the girl's face when she first saw me. The way the kid with the flashlight, Eddie, looked at me as he talked to me like he hated me. Like a lamb on the slaughter. I remember Dad saying that ages ago, but tonight I think I finally got what it meant. That is the end of this chapter. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.